Ever notice how we kind of like shift our energy depending on who we're with? You know, like you've got your work self, you're out with friends self, kind of normal, right? But what if you felt like you were always putting on a show, hiding pieces of yourself just to fit in? That's what we're getting into today with this deep dive, looking at high masking, especially for some autistic individuals. Mm. We're working with your article, Debunking the Myth, Is High Masking a Conscious Choice? Ready to jump in. Absolutely. And just so we're all on the same page, from a clinical standpoint, masking like we're talking about means, well, the efforts someone might make, sometimes consciously, sometimes not even realizing it, to, I guess you could say, camouflage those natural autistic traits when they're interacting with others. So it's even like more intense than just trying to fit in, would you say? Yeah, I think so. The article uses that phrase high masking for a reason, right? Right. Like it's not just being polite. It's it goes deeper than that. Much deeper. Way deeper. It really is. Think of it this way. We all adjust how we talk depending on, you know, the situation who we're with. But for someone who's doing this high masking, it's like, ooch. It's like they're speaking a different language all the time. Like yeah. they're constantly having to translate everything about themselves. Wow. Yeah. That's a really good way to put it. And the article gets into specifics too, right? Like we all know someone who fidgets mm. or they need things just so. Right, right. And those can actually be what are called stimming behaviors, which some uh, autistic people find really soothing. Exactly. But this high masking would mean they're constantly having to suppress those urges. Exactly. And that constant effort to suppress or camouflage, you know, it's exhausting. It can be utterly draining. Like just imagine even just attending a, I don't know, a networking event, which can be tough for anyone, let's be honest. But then on top of that, imagine having to like consciously monitor every facial expression you make, every single social cue. And then while you're doing that, you're also trying to make sure you appear, you know, neurotypical. It's a lot. Yeah, it sounds like your social battery would be drained mm -hmm. like 10 times faster. And the article doesn't beat around the bush. It straight up calls this a learned survival tactic for some. It's not a <laughs> choice at all. And what really struck me was that it mentions how a lot of people start this masking really young, like we're talking elementary school young, just to try to avoid getting bullied or being singled out. It's heartbreaking, really. It really is. Mm -hmm. It makes you think about how deeply ingrained these societal pressures are. They are. And how early on they can really affect someone's development. Absolutely. It sends the message that who you are naturally is somehow wrong or unacceptable. Right. So it's no wonder that masking becomes this way to, like, just cope, you know, to try and feel safe in a world that often feels very judgmental. That's such an important point. It's about survival. Yeah. It's about trying to navigate a world that isn't always kind or understanding. Exactly. And you use the word cope there, which makes it sound like there's a real cost to this. The article definitely doesn't shy away from that, does it? Uh, it doesn't. It lists out some of the possible consequences of high masking, and it can be really impactful. We should talk about those more in depth because I think they're more significant than a lot of people realize. Yeah. And I think it'd be good to spend some time on those costs, you know, the consequences, mm. because the article doesn't just like list them, it really, you know, digs into the impact. And I think for our listeners, especially some who maybe aren't autistic themselves, but they know and love someone who is, this is where things can get really eye opening. It really can be. Let's take anxiety, for example. Um, the article mentions a study where they found that individuals who regularly masked had much higher scores on these assessments they used to measure burnout. Oh, wow. Yeah. And a lot of them were reporting chronic fatigue, emotional exhaustion, you know, really struggling. Which makes sense, right? Because if you're constantly on, you know, always suppressing those natural responses, mm -hmm. it's got to be exhausting. It's like your body's stress response never gets a break. Yeah, you're spot on. And that kind of chronic stress, it can really do a number on you, both physically and mentally. We're talking trouble sleeping, problems with digestion. Even your immune system can take a hit. It's not just, you know, a mental thing. It affects your whole body. Wow. And then there's like the identity piece, which the article talks about, too. And this one really got me thinking because, you know, if you spent years and years masking, hiding these essential parts of who you are, what does that even do to your sense of self? That's a huge question, and it's something a lot of people struggle with. The article highlights how, for some, it can lead to this feeling of being disconnected from themselves. Mm -hmm. Like you're always performing, you know? Never truly able to just relax and be yourself. Not even when you're alone. 
Yeah. And that can really impact self-esteem, relationships, even the kind of career choices you make. Yeah, it's almost like you're living this like double life. Yeah. But, you know, not in a fun, glamorous way. Right. More like a... A constant underlying anxiety. Uh, exactly. Exactly. And I think this is where that whole myth part of the article's title comes in. Yeah. Because... There are people out there who might think masking is something someone's doing on purpose. Right, like they're um, trying to manipulate or deceive people. Exactly. And this article does a great job of breaking down why that's just not the case. It is so not. It's about understanding that for some autistic individuals, masking is a way to try and survive in a world that's not always kind or understanding to their neurodiversity. It's not about being fake. It's about fitting in and trying to avoid these negative consequences that can come with being different. Exactly. And I think that brings us to like the core of what this article is really pushing for, understanding. 100%. It's not enough to just know the word masking. You have to understand the why behind it. Right. And... Even more importantly, what we can actually do to try and create a world where it's less necessary. I completely agree. And that's really what the article is advocating for. It's about challenging our own assumptions about what we think is normal and making space for everyone. You know, appreciating the fact that we're all different and that neurodiversity is a strength, not a deficit. And that really resonated with me, that idea that it's not about fixing anyone. It's about building a world where everybody feels safe to be exactly who they are. Exactly. And when we start to see it from that angle, it becomes less about them versus us and more about we because yeah. we're all in this together. Mm. We really are. And we all have a part to play in creating a world that's more inclusive and compassionate and understanding. 100%. And on that note, I think that's a good place to you know leave our listeners with a little something to ponder. We've spent this deep dive unpacking high masking, the reasons behind it, the impact it has. But now it's about, well, what are we going to do with this information? How can you, in your own unique way, contribute to making the world a place where everyone feels seen and heard and valued for exactly who they are? Mm -hmm. Makes you think. Right. If we actually put in the effort to make the world a more accepting place, more flexible about what's considered normal, wouldn't that be better for everyone, not just, you know, the people who feel like they have to mask all the time? I think so, definitely. In fact, the article even touches on this idea that embracing neurodiversity, it's not just about, like, tolerance. Right. It's about actually recognizing the value in different ways of thinking, different ways of being. Mm -hmm. When we make space for those differences, we're opening ourselves up to new perspectives, new solutions, all kinds of things we might have missed otherwise. Totally. Like, mm -hmm. instead of seeing someone stimming and, like, judging it as odd or finding it distracting, what if we like shifted our thinking? What if we got curious about why they might be doing that? What need does it fulfill for them? Right. Because the article talks about how for some people, stimming can be really calming. Yeah, it can be very regulating. It can even help them focus. Absolutely. We could all learn a thing or two from that, even if our own ways of like self-soothing look totally different. Exactly. It's about moving away from that place of judgment and moving into a place of curiosity empathy. And the amazing thing is when you make that shift, it doesn't just benefit the person who's finally able to be themselves. Yeah. It creates a ripple effect. The whole community benefits. I love that. So, okay, we're wrapping up here. Where do we even go from here? Because the article talks about encouraging authenticity and promoting awareness, which sound great and all, but like, what does that actually look like in our everyday lives? I mean, well, I think it starts with just being more aware, you know, like really paying attention to the language we use, the assumptions we're making, educating ourselves about neurodiversity in general, and then, you know, having those conversations. Yeah. And speaking up when we see someone being treated unfairly, it's about creating that culture of acceptance. And it starts in our own little corners of the world, in our homes, our workplaces, you know, wherever we are. That's so important that it's not on autistic individuals to constantly be educating us. We have to take some responsibility, too. Absolutely. Seek out that knowledge. Be open to learning. And I love how the article makes this point. It's not about fixing anyone. That's key. It's about making the world a place where everybody feels safe enough to be themselves. Neurodiversity and all. Beautifully put. And, you know, when we come at it from that perspective, it stops being about them versus us and it becomes about we. Because that's what it is. We're all in this together. We are. Well, on that note, I think that's a perfect place to wrap up this deep dive. Thanks for joining us as we explored high masking, the reasons behind it, and what we can do to create a more inclusive world. Until next time. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure.